everyone. This is Jeffrey Wu. And thank you to Real Vision for having me introduce and talk to my uh, friend, Aubrey de Grey. So we've had a number of conversations over the years. And I would say that Aubrey's work has been quite influential in terms of just setting the tone of how academics, but also mainstream folks think about aging and the potential to stop aging. So Aubrey, great to speak with you again on the Real Vision platform. Well, it's great to be here, Jeffrey. I am looking forward to our chat. So I think if you look at the interview records, you've been on record making very bold, I think, provocative claims about anti-aging. And I think to a lot of your credit, I think in the early days you were iconoclastic. People thought you were crazy. And now mainstream academia and I think the mainstream folks are just being like, hey, this is actually now quite possible. Um, so I'd love to get your thoughts, May 2021, as we're having this conversation. What is the current snapshot? Let's give the lay of the land for where we're at today, May 2021. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how much things have changed. But I think it's important to understand that some things have changed and some things have not really changed. So what has certainly changed enormously is the broad acceptance within the expert community and increasingly within the wider world that the paradigm for how we might bring aging under um, comprehensive medical control that I first put, started putting forward more than 20 years ago now, that paradigm is actually quite sensible and might actually work. So we would actually do better by trying to repair the damage that the body has already done to itself throughout life, rather than essentially making the body run more cleanly and slowing down the rate at which it creates more damage. Um, everyone saw immediately that in an ideal world, you know, that would obviously be better. We could actually treat older people. But the assumption had always been, before I came along, that that was vastly more difficult than slowing aging down. And I pointed out that no, actually, it might be a great deal easier. And it took me a long time to, you know, to win that um, intellectual um, argument. Uh, so that's great. And still, it may be said that I am a little bit on the optimistic side of the spectrum with regard to the time frame for developing those technologies. But I'm within the range, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not viewed as crazy in that regard. But here's the thing that's not changed, and this is really important. What's really not changed at all is the acceptance of my view about what's going to happen in the longer term. Because there, we talk about this thing that I, this term that I coined a long time ago now called longevity escape velocity, which is all about the, what I see as the obvious and you know, inescapable implication of the development of reasonably good damage repair therapies. I pointed out, I'm going to say starting in at least 2003, 2004, that the thing about rejuvenation that making the body run more cleanly does not give us is rejuvenation gives, buys us time. It essentially allows us to continue improving the therapies and applying better and better therapies to the same people and delivering as a result essentially the indefinite postponement of the health problems of late life. And this concept is still one that, at least in public, almost all of my, the expert community still, you know, they run away very fast when the whole topic comes up. Um, I think it's just really largely because it's still politically incendiary um, to talk about indefinite lifespan. It still sounds like science fiction. And the fact that it is an inescapable, in my view, logical consequence of the things that are now accepted by the expert community, that isn't quite enough to do the job. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a good, accurate description of how, you know, as an observer of the space as well, and, you know, the, the, the quick change, but also some things do still seem taboo. So maybe to help just frame the conversation and make sure folks who are new to the longevity space I think one of your key contributions to the space was really helping to find a, a set number of ways that we age. Uh, can we get a quick survey on these seven uh, mechanisms and then maybe focus on one or two of them that have had the most mm -hmm. acceleration or you're most excited about or optimistic about? Yeah, sure. 
So yes, actually, this is really one of